like no, 200. That's right. <laughs>
Depends on what you're driving. Huh? I said you can pull out of that. Depends on what you're driving. Uh, um, yeah, if you're driving a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> It's a, it is an interesting parking configuration. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the, we did explore an alternative, putting a whole nother curb cut down on the southwest corner. Um, but it just would have been, you know, more, more curb cuts, more pavement. Um, so, and this, this technically works the way we, the code reads, so. Uh, would it qualify for a variance? Um, I guess it is an oddly shaped lot, though it is very large, and you know, could have designed their way out of it, I guess. But you know, I and I, I guess it depends on the size of the vehicles, it, it where they're at, and how they get get in and out. It's more of an inconvenience for the owners, but I don't. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying, mm -hmm. uh, Commissioner. Mr. Newman about the tandem, what the actual ruling is there. Yeah, I mean, the tough one here is that, you know, what we're, what we're required to do is have them show these 10 by 18 blocks there. In reality, you could actually park three cars in a row on that driveway and they would totally fit. So most likely this parking arrangement won't actually so happen. You don't have to park in that diagonal configuration. Yeah, it's, it's more of a sort angles. of a Tetris thing when you, you're at this point of the code. So <laughs> because that's a very large driveway there. And they were only, I believe, a couple, you know, two feet short on being able to technically do three in a row, but one that wouldn't be allowed by the code, um, and two we have to have them show it correctly. So, okay. So I'm not going to ask it be pulled, but I'm going to ask that we vote on the two items individually. Okay, we can do that. So can I ask a question since we're on that prospect? Absolutely. Uh, the uh, I just wanted to make sure that, that we talked. To the, Katie and I talked about this landscape plan thing. Is it clear that they, when they submit their landscape plan, that they don't need to have uh, hire a landscape architect to do that? Yes, they're aware of that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, uh, any more questions for staff? Or no? Is anyone from the on sky concerned about our consent items? Then we'll bring it back, and I will do two separate motions and. If we're going to make a motion for prospect, we just got to remember the motion needs to include the supporting information that we received today. If you'd like, I can pull up the section of code to review that prior to is the this, motion. Is this uh, coastal? This is. It is in the coastal zone. So it's the old. So uh, it's the code. old code. Yeah. No, I read it. Okay. I mean, I, it's, apparently, it's an interpretation here. I interpret it a little differently. I would move approval of 1375 Prospect Avenue with the addition of the uh, condition regarding the three bathroom windows on the south uh, side. Great. We have a motion, a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? I'm opposed. Uh, just for the record, I, I think the parking requires a variance. Okay. So we have uh, one opposing. So we'll move to... Uh, 4B for the consent calendar. Any, all those in, oh, I guess first we need to make a motion. Move approval. Second. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 So that is approved uh, unanimously. Okay, so uh, that's it for the consent calendar. We'll move to public hearings. We have one item tonight, which is uh, 529 Capitol Avenue. And then we'll ask for a staff report. All right, so for our public hearing tonight, we have 529 Capitola Avenue. The applicants are in attendance in the audience there. The applicant is applying for a design permit and a conditional use permit to add two dormers to an existing historic residence located at 529 Capitola Avenue within the CN, Neighborhood Commercial Zoning District. The application requires a conditional use permit because it's a significant change to a historic structure. The existing residence is a non-conforming two-story single-family residence. The house is recognizable as a somewhat altered mid-19th century national style cottage. The national style is embodied in vernacular steeply pitched gable roofed houses with half stories at the upper level. The, they are commonly clad in board and batten siding and feature two two or one one double hung wood windows placed individually. The primary character of this historic house is obtained from its simple form and materials. So we have our existing elevations. Uh, 
do a good job of illustrating the eaves. And that was an important line that needed to be uh, preserved in this project. And then we have the proposed elevations. So the applicant is proposing to construct two new dormers, one on the northwest side and one on the southeast side of the existing second story roof. So shown here, the, uh, the bottom left image is the northwest side and the top left image is the southeast side. The dormers preserve the archetypical 1870s steeply pitched roof line at the front and rear elevations. The dormer will have shingle siding to distinguish the non-historic dormer additions from the board and batten siding on the historic structure. And the proposed additions do not increase the floor area or height of the structure. The proposed project includes a significant alteration to the historic structure. Uh, significant alterations require a conditional use permit with approval by the Planning Commission. And any modification to a historic resource must comply with the Secretary of the Interior standards to qualify for a CEQA exemption. Architectural historian Leslie Dill has reviewed the project and concluded that is, it is compatible with the Secretary of the Interior Standards for Rehabilitation. Local historian Carolyn Swift provided additional information about the history of the structure at the <coughs> Arkansas Site Review Committee meeting and requested that uh, complete and accurate history of the building be documented. Leslie Dill reviewed the materials and provided a memo in which she determined that the changes in explanation of the historic background do not change the description or list of character defining features of the historic property and maintained her previous conclusion that the potential project does not diminish the historic integrity of the significance of the property. So with that, staff recommends Planning Commission approve the design permit and conditional use permit based on the conditions of approval and findings. Okay, thank you. Any questions for staff? Just a minor question is uh, the plans usually have uh, more of a uh, have a page that shows the particular parcel in relation to the rest of the area and there wasn't uh, maybe it's not that relevant for this particular application. The streetscape? It yeah it wasn't I, at least in my set I couldn't find anything that, that showed the overall uh, site. We've got a couple of those lately. Context. I think it would be a good idea. I mean, in this one, there's no real change in any uh, side yards or height or anything, so maybe it's not as necessary. With the um, adjacent structures, that yeah, one, which we typically. Yeah, shows the street okay. and the uh, you know, parcel. And so like a Frank water. Banton yeah, usually yeah. catches that, but he didn't he <laughs> catch, it, catch it on here, and I think I didn't notice because it was such a, a small yeah, addition I mean, to I, the As I say, I think what, what's at issue here probably doesn't really require that kind of information. Be nice to have it though as mm -hmm. general practice. Frank keeps me honest with that. I, I usually tell applicants up front okay. to make sure to show the outlying yeah. properties for privacy reasons. So okay. Um, any other questions for staff? If not, would the applicant like to speak? Um, if, if you're gonna sir, if you want to come up to the microphone so we can hear you and, and then you can be on TV. <laughs> That's okay. Do I should I sign in? Yes. Sure. Okay, I'm Jim Latore, and um, I've, my wife and I, Kathy, um, bought the house um, recently, and we are um, actually Capitolans from back in the early 80s when we moved, um, got married and moved to Depot Hill, so we're pretty familiar with Capitola, and over the years, um, we, my wife has a preschool, and I was a school principal and administrator for 35 years, and now recently retired. And we're super excited to be back in Capitola and super excited to be um, have the opportunity to have this house it's a it's a really cool house in fact um, I just in in knowing people went to a hundred year old lady's birthday not too long ago and I was talking to her and she said uh, Jimmy I heard you moved and I said yeah she goes what, what's the address and I said 529 Capitola Avenue and she told me that her mother was born in that house in oh, 1899 wow. No kidding. Yeah, and um, so it's pretty cool. There's some history. Um, it's uh, the Canepa family who, and then one of the girls married Gio and that's Casagnola, so it's all the old time Italian Fisher people. So it's pretty cool history for me because I'm Italian and I kind of relate to that a little bit. Nice. So, um, uh, and the house is a really cool house. We don't want to diminish the fact that it's a historic house and has some significance to Capitola, but um, 
I probably should have come with a, <laughs> a Band-Aid over my forehead because there's some places, um, I, I, in order to get into the bed, I have to kind of lean over. <laughs> so what we're looking to do is just to raise the roof a little bit so we can um, have some, um, and you saw in the pictures how steep it is. Right. The, the, the stairs are super non-conforming either, so they're super steep. Um, and um, so we just want to get it so it's livable for the two of us. And, um, and uh, so we would just hope that you guys could see the, that we're not trying to build a three-story monstrosity. We're just trying to do um, what's right for us to live in comfortably, but um, understand that we want to keep the history of Capitola there. Very nice. Anything else? <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk anymore. Thank you. Thank you. Very for good. <laughs> well, you moved in. You moved into a neighborhood with uh, a number of principals, so yes. you, you did yeah. well. Most of us don't have principals either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I won't go there, but <laughs> let's, uh, I'll bring that back to the, if there's no other that would like to speak, which I guess not. We'll bring it back to the planning commission for discussion and motion. I just like to say I'm glad you purchased the place because it was getting neglected and now it's going to survive and yeah. be restored so that's great yeah. no comments so we don't have any comments and it someone can make a motion if seems you feel like a good project to me great <laughs> uh, i move approval okay so we have approval we have a second i second we have a second <laughs> all those in favor aye aye, aye. aye. unanimous very good <laughs> thank you and good it's a it's going to be a beautiful house yes. mm -hmm. glad to have you Keeping the history. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you. Okay, so that concludes uh, the most of our meeting. Now we'll go to the director's report. Yes, I have uh, three items tonight. First, first item is I received a letter from the architect on 1810 Wharf Road, and this is the property that you can see across the river. They, um, in their preservation plan, they said they would be saving all of the exterior um, siding. And what they did is they numbered every piece, they uh, piled it up, and they've stored it. As they're at the point of going to put this back up, they've, in going through the boards, there's quite a few boards, there's a, a, a significant amount of boards that are damaged. And they're asking, rather than, um, than putting all the boards back on place or picking from the best and doing just one area, that they'd like to have new boards milled to match what was existing. Under the criteria, the uh, community development director is allowed to approve minor modifications to a project. I'm prepared to approve this, but I wanted to just check in with the planning commission and see if you'd prefer that I put this on an agenda item rather than make an administrative decision on allowing um, the boards to be replicated. But I do feel that um, from the evidence they've provided that it would be the best decision. Didn't we do that on the Lynn's house? We did this on... Um, on the water tower at the Lynn's house. You <coughs> may have. I wasn't I involved with that. This, this came up at 124 Central mm -hmm. previously as they were preparing to put the boards back. Um, they only ended up putting back a section of the boards because of the um, significant termite damage. So this is one of the oldest structures in Capitola and the boards are not all the same measurements and when they remill them they also will make sure they're not the same exact measurements so they'll keep the funkiness of the building and the original concept but um, they'd like it to last a whole lot longer and that's what they're requesting so I just wanted to check in see if you'd like this to come back to planning commission or if you're okay with a development director okay. decision yeah I mean I'm fine with your judgment on this but it seems like since this is happening more than once that when we make these kind of decisions at the beginning we should kind of take this into account that when they start construction it's not gonna it, it's gonna be a little bit different than we mm -hmm. probably think when the plans come in yeah and when we stress that to applicants Airport, when they come yeah. in is yeah. if, if you want this you should really request this at the time of approval I by planning commission so. yeah I, I think the alternative to what are their choices here we just delay the process and get the same results so I don't have a problem Does anybody have a problem with just no. in the ministry yeah and i think there's precedent because i think we allowed that on the, the water tower at the lynn's house and then years ago i think when one of the six sisters was restored the one it would be the one the northerly one right i 
think we allowed that on that case too. And we did at 124 Central. So mm -hmm. it's good memory. Th these houses are old, so thinking that we're going to put the old wood back up there is optimistic. is nice, <laughs> but it's very <laughs> optimistic, like you said. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, okay. next, Katie. Yeah. Um, next is uh, the city has received a conceptual I'm review rest. application for the village hotel project. So the conceptual review application is in. Um, there were some minor changes we asked in there for the um, actual submittals. We sent them an incomplete letter. They were planning on coming back in this week, and. Thank you. They did today. Okay, so that that is officially in. Um, so we're going to be seeing how much room we have on the agenda for the July hearing, but you may be seeing that as soon as July. We'll try our best because this is a big project to get that packet out and in a timely manner. Or if you'd like to see the plans ahead of the packet, we're happy to provide those to you because it, it will take time to digest. And they're just asking so, some broad questions for the conceptual review. Uh, prior, prior to moving forward with a formal application. Yeah. Um, and Katie, what are they going to do, are we going to do the city any special notification other than seems like we need to make the whole city aware of, it's a major. So we typically notice to anyone within 500 feet, would your recommendation be 1,000 feet well, or? Um, yeah, I, I'll How take about something in the newsletter. That's what I was going yeah, to say. Uh, I mean, this is really a controversial. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're already organizing. But yeah, so no, if, we, if we could put something that maybe it doesn't have to be as formal as the notification we do for 500 feet, but uh, the city website and and the city newsletter, like uh, we we can do extensive it? noticing. Um, I'll, I'll broaden it to at least all the the residential neighborhoods around the village, not just the village. But if you and notify the Sentinel, have them do an article. I can definitely do that, yeah. This yeah it's not really the, uh, an issue of neighborhood. It's, you yeah. know, it's a whole city It's issue. a whole yeah. city, yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. so we'll, we'll get it on the web page. We'll, we'll inform the local newspaper. Um, as far as the newsletter, I don't think that will go out in time for the, but prior to the July hearing, so. And the, and the July is this is a conceptual review it is conceptual so review, so if... But, but this the is the time probably yeah, when we I mean, get the I, I input. I would even think it, if we can't put it in a newsletter before the July hearing, that might be a good reason to do it in August. I, I really Delay the meeting? I, I, I agree that we need to get all the input before we get too far down the road. Or so, end up some so I have a question about the process. This is a big deal, as you pointed out. And doesn't that mean that this is inevitably going to go in front of the city council? It will. It will go. This conceptual review, they've um, paid the fee to go before planning commission and city council, so it'll go. So we're both. just an intermediate step. Yeah, I'm but just well, gonna, we're but we're a big intermediate step because we're the ones that will be making the decisions on the initial changes and stuff. So um, it will. It goes to us for approval before it gets to the city council. So if there's going to be any issues, we, we need to hear them out, I think, before. just We just need to make sure that we let everyone have their chance to share their concerns or favor either way. And it's just I've seen other issues that were big issues where people came in and, you know, petitions and this and that in front of the planning commission and felt, you know, oh, gosh, we got to do this again in front of the city council. and. It just seemed to me that yeah, the process seems to be that. very I mean, the, the general plan. Oh, I'm s go ahead, Courtney. Well, I was the, the general plan uh, process. This was really a big part of the general plan process, probably biggest behind uh, 41st Avenue Mall. And so, I agree with the chair that um, we we want to make sure that nobody feels that this is kind of being slipped through in some way or that there are hearings that they weren't aware of or uh, that from the very beginning as this thing proceeds and I, the, the city council in my experience i mean we're just a planning commission we deal with all the planning issues they deal with some planning issues and lots of other things too so they rely to some extent on what we do here and we it's not just a waste of time to come before the Planning Commission and then go to the City Council, in my experience. So do you feel that, that we per, we perform a different function than the City Council? Because my, th think my thought was that 
you know, they're going to go bend over backwards to satisfy stats requirements, and then they come in front of the planning commission, and then we give them a bunch of re requirements. And in fact, that if they were to go directly to the city council, maybe none of those requirements were really needed to get past the city council. And so, if we're in fact providing valuable either information for the city council or or a, a legitimate intermediate step, I. I think we're a filter, yeah. and, and we iron out a lot of the issues before they get to the city council so the city council doesn't have to deal with them. I mean, the, our decisions can be appealed, but that's why we exist. If we didn't have that function, if we followed your route, there's no reason for us to sit here. Well, I, I, and I understand that argument. I just thought that this, since this is such a big thing, and, and, and clearly all the city councilmen are all very aware of all the issues, and I was just wondering if we're providing that so much of a in my well, Yeah, they deal it, it with something like this g in general, not all the time, but in general at a more of a policy level, a higher level. And, and we're right. down kind of in the trenches dealing with the details of s plans and having them come back and so forth. And it's, it's, it's a different Okay, yeah. so, yeah. so, okay. So we would get, the idea would be we dig deeper, in theory anyway, and then provide a recommendation that they could really take to heart that this was a well-studied decision and maybe even listen to us. And Yeah, whether they listen <laughs> to it is a whole different <laughs> issue, but at in least theory, we, yes. <laughs> we could do our due diligence, absolutely. All right, fair enough, thank you. Very good, okay. Okay, yeah, and I'll just echo that. In these very large projects, the Planning Commission plays a very important role in my mind because as you see, when in the larger projects, the recommendations um, in reviewing recent development agreements in other cities and preparing for the mall, the strong um, recommendations by planning commission, they may get tweaked when they get to city council and some of them may get uh, removed or added to, but it's a very important role um, in setting up exa you know, your recommendation and what should be included in a project or removed from a project. So. And it does it, um, and it gives the opportunity for the um, the developer between the planning commission stage and the city council stage, at least at conceptual review, to be brainstorming and have can uh, bring up additional mitigation points when they get in front of city council based on planning commission's concerns that are highlighted during your review. So, um, with that, I'll move on to the okay. next item. So. As you all know from your hard work back in February and March on the zoning code update, the city council has been reviewing the updates. Um, at the last three hearings, I believe, I've presented to the planning, to the city council. And during the first meeting, they asked that we slow down and make sure that we have a thorough legal review of the document before resubmitting to the Coastal Commission. So our city attorney, Reed Galigli, has been working on the review of that. And I've just been bringing forward the minor amendments of things we've noticed over the year of implementation. Um, so Reed's presentation will be at the June 27th meeting. And during that meeting, he's gonna be looking at um, which items are an overreach of the Coastal Commission's power for um, whether or not they, they're within their power under the Coastal Act to suggest within our document. And then we'll be dividing those into two categories of which, which are kind of the, the gray areas that we maybe can live with and we don't think are um, negative for, or will have a negative impact on our residents in our city and which of those items are more impactful and we shouldn't allow to occur. So will be the June 27th meeting should be of interest and you're welcome to watch it on video after or come in a, come and attend and um, in hindsight I'll just say that we went through that section pretty fast on the Coastal Commission and um, I'll bring back reports after the City Council review but I'm I'm confident that after the legal review we've had such significant changes occur that this will be coming back to you before we submit it to Coastal Commission. So at that point, I'll slow down. <laughs> I'll go through everything, give you adequate time to digest. Maybe we'll have a couple special meetings where it's such important information and then um, 
move forward with a new recommendation to the City Council at the correct time. So any questions regarding that process at this time? So, no? Okay, well that concludes the director's report. Thank you. Okay, very good. Thanks, Katie. Uh, commission communications. No? Okay, we're looking forward to a car show weekend, so the city will be uh, closed down more or less for through traffic, but um, that's about it. With that, we'll adjourn the meeting. Thank you very much. But when is the July meeting? Oh, yeah, that's... 18th. 18th? Because it always gets pushed because the 4th of July. Yeah, so that's yeah. what I was wondering. Yeah, thank yeah. you. July 18th, thank you.